Good evening, and welcome to Around the Fire, a new show produced by all of us at Shaman Motion Pictures. I'm your host, Josh Murphy, and tonight we want to have an important chat with you about electric vehicles. As we look to the future as an opportunity to improve our society, combat climate change, and use technology to solve the greatest challenges of our generation, we must see all sides of the equation. On the surface level, an electric vehicle society sounds wonderful, but there are many complex parts that we must address with caution before we rapidly revolutionize our automobile industry. Where does this technology fit into the puzzle of our solutions? Let's find out. For the first point we want to address, it's the obvious one. If we switch to an electric vehicle society, will we actually see an improvement in our net carbon emissions? We are perhaps most attracted to this new technology because, well, it promises a lower overall carbon emission output compared to your, your typical combustion engines. In an era where runaway carbon fills our atmosphere, this is of course a noble objective. But a recent United Nations report warns us that the raw materials used in electric car batteries are highly concentrated in a small number of countries where environmental and labor regulations are not only weak, but in some cases non-existent. Thus, battery production for EVs is driving a boom in small-scale or artisanal cobalt production in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which supplies two-thirds of the global output of this mineral. These are artisanal mines, which account for up to a quarter of the country's production have been found to be not only dangerous, but they actually employ child labor too. Not only the regulations there, but when an EV arrives in a showroom, it's already caused 30,000 pounds of carbon dioxide emission. The equivalent among the manufacturing of a conventional car is only 14,000 pounds. While long-term data suggests an EV on the road for more than four years can negate this carbon output, no doubt, they have serious upfront costs to create. This starts to sound like we're not exactly getting our bargain by making the switch, with metals like cobalt and nickel and lithium having their demands skyrocket. We are ignoring the true detriment that this mining has to our environment. We can't support the world's major governments switching to an all-electric vehicle fleet without many precautions in place first. Our transition to these vehicles, it must be gradual, and we will need to mine the materials needed for this technology with precision, efficiency, and through countries that have appropriate and fair environmental and employee safety regulations in place. We're going to have to look past just the harvesting of these minerals, though. We'll also need to develop more efficient methods of recycling the outputted batteries. Once this material enters into a vehicle, we need programs in place to ensure we can use the cobalt or lithium as long as possible, thus reducing our need for expanded mining. There is an industry shift in the near future, with major manufacturers such as Yamaha, Hyundai, Ford, Tesla, Nissan, and so many more all beginning to launch their first lines of electric vehicles. And other ambitious startups are now offering their vehicles out at affordable prices, such as the brand Candy, with their vehicle out now at $18,000. The U.S. federal government has been offering a tax incentive of $7,500 to switch to electric vehicles as well. So the wind is changing, and this new technology will improve and slowly take over our infrastructure. But that's the key. Slowly. There are now 26,000 electric vehicle charging stations open to the public in the United States, with more than 84,000 plugs. We will need to expand the electrical access nationwide, as well as research new ways to create more long-term, efficient batteries with higher output of energy. In order to expand this new technology, we're going to have to drastically scale up our production of raw materials, like cobalt. This is not only going to have damaging effects to our environment, 
but it also creates many side effects in the laborers who mine it. We're going to need experts and scientists to reimagine how we mine these resources. We'll need an investment in new robotic technology to aid in this process, reducing the symptoms afflicted to human labor. We'll also need to look to international leaders for science on the front line of the reform. There are many innovators making great strides on this problem. But people are dying for this mineral. Children suffer from it. Livelihoods, educations, neighborhoods, entire environments ravaged, personal safety sacrificed for it. And that's because cobalt's a hot property. It's used in medicine for imaging, cancer, radiotherapy, and sterilizing medical equipment. It's also in the rechargeable batteries in our own smartphones and laptops. It's in our everyday life, and it's a component of the lithium-ion batteries that also power electric vehicles, as well as store energy from solar, wind, and other renewable sources of energy, which is going to give it a pretty essential role in the transition from fossil fuels to green energy. One report forecasts that global demand for cobalt will increase 60% above 2017 levels by 2025, with batteries projected to make up more than half of that use. As interest in cobalt has grown, so has its interest in ensuring that it's ethically produced, minimizing harm to the people who mine it and the environment from which it's removed. People, including children, as young as seven years old, work in hazardous conditions without gloves to protect them from contact dermatitis, breathing cobalt-laden dust that's associated with potentially fatal lung disease, Look, the miners are working in unsafe tunnels that are liable to collapse and bury them, all in settings that are prone to violence and sexual exploitation. That's why there's now a renewed focus from end users, such as tech companies and us, consumers, on the cobalt supply chain. Some of the biggest tech companies in the world are encouraged to do their due diligence on the cobalt they include in their products and make sure that they are able to trace that cobalt through the entire supply chain and ensure it's responsibly sourced and ethically mined. Our continued demand for electronic devices will not slow down, especially smartphones. Combine that with the development of electric vehicles powered by lithium ion batteries means the demand for lithium and cobalt, which is already high, will soar. We need strong investment now in collection and recycling infrastructure technologies combined with effective regulation. So hopefully we can result in a higher collection and recycling rate for batteries. We can also use financial incentives to encourage the production of more sustainable devices. Look, we want to see a world where we use technology to solve our problems. And there's a future where electric vehicles can be part of that. But it isn't going to work unless we get our hands dirty. We need to explore and research the best ways to do it, and ultimately be cautious of how this transition is going to affect the environment. What will be the point of trading in one pollutant for another? Before we all rush to get the brand new Tesla, we should ensure that companies we are purchasing from are supporting the best, most sustainable, most ethical practices available. We should use the power of our vote to help elect officials who support researching new techniques to handling cobalt and lithium mining. We need to make sure this is done ethically and eco-consciously. Look, technology can be a useful tool when it comes to saving the planet. But we just can't jump on the bandwagon of the next new thing without addressing the realism behind our decisions. If you want to take direct action right now, consider donating to the Enough Project, an international nonprofit that's committed to countering genocide and crimes against humanity, especially in Africa and countries like the, D the DRC. Your donation will help their organization directly counter corruption, human rights violations, and support their staff fighting on the front lines of cobalt mining and many other issues.
Okay, that's it for this episode. We hope that this might have changed your perspective on the future of electric vehicles. It's important that we really consider what choices we're making. We must remember to do our best to protect and preserve our planet and not allow fancy new toys to offer us consequential treats. If you like this show or any of the other documentaries we create, consider hitting the subscribe button below, leave us a review, hit us up in the comments, or really go the extra distance and become a patron through our Patreon page. Our patrons are our biggest supporters and get access to swag, behind the scenes footage, and first looks of all our new content. Thank you all for everything that you do to help make our planet a better place and for joining us for this fireside chat. We'll see you next time. Safe travels, friends.